Uh, good afternoon. Um, thank all of you for coming. Uh, I'm very honored to be here with such distinguished public servants and uh, activists and members of our community here. I'm Eric Schneiderman, the New York State Attorney General, and I'd like to first thank the Troy Re Rehabilitation and Improvement Program trip for hosting us here today. This is one of the outstanding housing counseling and community funding agencies, which is being funded under the Homeowner Protection Program. We're very proud of the work they do and happy to be here with them today. Um, joining us today is a, uh, uh, an array of uh, the uh, all-stars from the Capital Region, uh, State Senator Neil Breslin, Assemblymember John McDonald, Rensselaer County Executive Kathleen Gimeno, Troy Mayor Lou Rosamia, and Hillary Lamishaw, who is uh, also with us as the, the Director of Community Development for TRIP, uh, again, our host. We also have the uh, Schenectady Mayor, Gary McCarthy, a good friend and activist on housing issues, Albany Mayor Kathy Sheehan, equally aggressive and active, and uh, a representative from State Senator Kathleen uh, Marchione's office is here with us also. Um, we also have with us uh, Aisha White, who's a homeowner who has been assisted by the HOP program in this region, and she's going to talk a little bit about her story. And we are also joined by representatives of a group of terrific agencies, housing advocates, people who provide legal services, uh, as well as folks from the Empire Justice Center who help us manage this critical statewide effort. I want to thank all of them for their work. Um, and uh, also here is Steve Strickman, who's the executive director of the Schenectady County Land Bank, and I'm going to talk about land banks a little bit later. You can, yes, everyone can, Everyone will identify themselves as we go along. So I'm here today because the key to success in dealing with a crisis like the foreclosure crisis and the collapse of the American housing market is to be creative and to work in collaboration with others. And I'm proud to say that the folks who are standing here are great at working all of at joining together to work on a problem that is bigger than any one of us can solve on our own. Uh, in Troy, in the capital region, and all across our state, the impact of the foreclosure crisis is unlike anything our state has ever seen before. People who are struggling just to stay in their homes and communities who are trying to deal with the wave of vacant properties, uh, many the result of foreclosures, uh, that bring down property values and harm the whole community. So we've sought to address these programs through two uh, major initiatives, and we're looking to add more, um, the, the HOP program and land banks. And this really began uh, as soon as I took office. The crash in 2008, most people did not realize this, collapse of the housing market, destroyed the American middle class. We lost in that crash $7.4 trillion in home equity. The wealth of the American middle class was in the equity in their homes. And when I, um, when I took office, I recognized that this was a bigger problem than I could solve on my own. And, uh, the collapse of the housing market had a particularly devastating impact on the counties in and around the capital region. Actually, eight of the 20 counties in New York State with the highest rate of foreclosures are in this area. And uh, uh, this is something that we have to address collectively. And the people who are here know what happens. Families struggle to stay in their homes. If you have an underwater mortgage, that means you owe more on your mortgage than your home is worth. You're not spending a nickel help keep the local economy going. You're just trying to stay in your home. Some people have to get out of the home anyway, and abandoned properties become havens for crime. They bring down property values in the entire neighborhood, depress the local tax base, and it's something that we have to address in a, a much more comprehensive way than we were do, dealing with ever at any hit point in the history of our state. So when I became uh, the Attorney General, we made a very strong commitment not just to going after the banks that contributed to the foreclosure crisis, but to encouraging our friends in the federal government that maybe it was time for them to go after the banks that contributed to the foreclosure crisis. And I'm very pleased that they responded and that in 2012, uh, the president announced a working group, which I co-chaired, to, go um, to go after these folks. And then as we started to get settlements with the banks, our goal has been to get it to the people who were hurt. We are trying to be as creative as we can be to make sure that New Yorkers get all the help they can. And if we can lift the New York housing market, and the mayors and county executives and others here will tell you, this is something that will help the economy of our entire state. So the first thing we did 
uh, was to recognize that in 2011, 345,000 New York families were facing foreclosure, and I found out that more than half of them never had a chance to talk to a lawyer or a housing counselor. So we responded to that by funding the HOP program. We're now funding more than 90 organizations across the state, like this one, and New Yorkers have been getting more benefits than people in other states because it makes sense if you go into a bank to try and get a modification of your loan and you have a housing counselor or a lawyer, you got a better shot at getting it done than if you don't. So as, as the program got set up in between uh, October of 2012 and the end of last year, uh, it has assisted more than 24,000 New York families and more than 6,600 of those families have already gotten mortgage modifications approved or, or they're, they're either done or are pending. In the capital region, uh, we've helped hundreds of families and we have uh, hundreds of mortgage modifications uh, coming. I think that the total as of the end of last year was more than 740 families. And we are gonna continue to fund these programs as long as they are needed. The result of the HOP program, I have to say, and, and again, my colleagues in government here, the, the folks in the legislature and the, the people who really are on the front lines, the people who run our local government, have been a critical partners in making all of this work. Um, when we did the first mortgage settlement with the five banks, which resulted in us getting $136 million, the, the people in the federal government, the people at HUD, estimated that New York families would get about $600 million in mortgage write-downs and other benefits. Because we had folks like TRIP and other agencies around the country, in that first uh, 15 months, New York families got more than $2 billion worth of mortgage write-downs. We're doing better than any other state because we invested in our infrastructure. And uh, that's something that we're very proud of and we will continue to work uh, creatively to help every New Yorker. No New Yorker should ever have to face foreclosure without being able to talk to a lawyer or housing counselor. That is a commitment I made as Attorney General and that's a commitment I intend to follow through on. And the second part of our strategy, which is really where we have to work uh, very, very closely with our other colleagues in government, is to provide funds for New York's land banks, which are nonprofit organizations that enable communities to buy abandoned properties and either rehabilitate them for sale or for rental as affordable housing, tear them down and deed the plot to the folks next door so it gets back on the tax rolls, or in some cases, uh, notably Buffalo, where they have so many abandoned properties, they're actually creating parkland. Um, and again, as I said, abandoned properties are not just a problem for the family that lost their homes. It is a problem for the entire block, for the entire community, and for our local governments. We've already provided about $13 million to eight land banks and have committed to at least another seven through a competitive open bidding process this summer. And last, a few weeks ago, I was proud to announce legislation, with, which with the help of uh, my colleagues here in the legislature, I, I think we can get passed this year, to increase the number of land banks from 10 to 20 so that more communities can have the benefits that these nonprofits provide. And we have a bill that, that has, uh, that's being introduced on that right now. Um, we've also introduced another piece of legislation that is addressing a problem that has baffled uh, government officials all across America. And that deals with what are called zombie properties, which is not something my daughter and her friends made up. That's what they're actually called. Uh, they're called zombie properties. And I guess, I don't know how America became all about zombies, but <laughs> these are zombie properties. So these are homes that the bank sends a foreclosure notice. The residents abandon them. But in New York, we have a very long foreclosure process. So uh, the bank then may take months or even years till the bank actually gets the property and then is responsible for maintaining it. So uh, what we are going to do with this zombie property bill is to require the banks, if the home is abandoned, which means the homeowners are overwhelming majority of them are not even contesting the foreclosure. If the property is abandoned, the bank knows it's going to get the property after few months, they have to start taking care of it. They have to start patching up the roof. They have to start mowing the lawn. They have to maintain it. And that's something that uh, is consistent with federal guidelines. If you have a federal housing administration insured mortgage, already are supposed to do that. And this would make sure that our state government, our counties, and our, our cities and towns can enforce that rule. So this would take financial pressure off. And it would also set up a registry of zombie properties because a lot of our colleagues in local government it's hard sometimes to figure out who has title to a property, and we want to make that easier. The goal here is to help people stay in their homes, help 
people who are in communities with abandoned properties revive their blocks, revive their communities, strengthen the tax base. And this is a commitment that we've made through the HOP program, through the land banks, and these two pieces of legislation will significantly increase our efforts. I'm proud to be here in Troy, um, and the folks in Troy and Albany, Schenectady, and I'm honored that we have three great mayors here with us today and county executive, um, uh, county, the county executive and others who work in the local governments here. It is tremendously important that we all stand together on this. This is not something that is a problem for one part of the state versus another part of the state. This is a statewide problem. It is, in fact, a national problem. It is not a Democratic or Republican problem. It is a problem for families all across our state. And if we can continue on this path and continue to keep folks in their home, get their mortgages written down, help communities re rehab abandoned properties, once we can actually stabilize and get our housing market moving again, that's the tide that lifts all boats. And with that, I want to bring up some of my colleagues here uh, to add their thoughts. And the first is someone I've worked with for a very long time, and I'm always proud to be in his presence, uh, Senator Neil Breslin. Thank you very much, Mr. Attorney General. And, you know, things happen for a reason. When Eric Schneiderman left the Senate, there was a tremendous, tremendous loss. But what a perfect time to become Attorney General. Eric Schneiderman was ahead of the curve on foreclosure. And I look around at so many friends of mine who are involved in organizations helping those people who suffer foreclosure. But we can't do it without money. And this Attorney General, from the start, said to the wrongdoers, the banks, who have done bad things, you will be held accountable. And funding will go for projects like HOP and land banks. And he's followed through. And in my opinion, unfortunately, I've been a senator for 18 years. There has been no one in government that I admire more who has done the right thing and has produced. And we are so fortunate to have had him as our attorney general. And I applaud the HOP program and obviously the land bank program. But think of what we had to do. And I look at so many of the wonderful advocates sitting here if we didn't have the funds to, to go forward. So let's keep it up. But I applaud my dear friend Eric Schneider for, for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you. Uh, that certainly was the high point of my week. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Neil. And now I'd like to introduce Assemblymember John McDonald. And I, too, want to uh, join the chorus and thank the Attorney General for his leadership. I have to wonder if you were a mayor at one time, because you are definitely working out of the executive's playbook. And as a former mayor, I can tell you that I was extremely ecstatic when the Attorney General mentioned the different programs that he's doing. Of course, working with our community partners to make sure that people who have spent their life's earnings are able to stay in their homes. Uh, it's heinous to think of what some of these corporations have done misguiding uh, individuals, but also, going back to my mayor's life, uh, that one house on a neighborhood ruins it for everybody. And I can tell you, not too long ago, I had individuals coming in with their keys, dropping them off, saying, I can't handle this property anymore, I'm moving away. And it causes such a nightmare for the community to deal with these properties. We used to joke that we ran the whole landscape company because we would cut the grass, we would drain out the trash. And Eric, you're absolutely right, and this is what's important about the registry. Trying to find a responsible party is frustrating, and it really just makes the whole neighborhood just dissipate in many aspects. Um, let's also not forget that over the last 30, 40 years, our urban centers have struggled because of the plight of the suburbs. Uh, we've lost the middle class in many aspects. Uh, tools such as the land bank, such as addressing zombie properties, helps bring our communities back, helps bring the middle class back, and as I'm sure these three mayors around me will say, will help bring a supportive, uh, a sustainable neighborhood. Thank you. So, Mr. Attorney General, thank you. I do appreciate your leadership on this. You would have been a great mayor. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. I love the job I got. Um, <laughs> Uh, thank you, John. And now I'd like to bring up uh, uh, the Rensselaer County Executive and, and a 
the city level and the county level. This is where the rubber meets the road. You can't propose things. You have to deliver. And uh, a great partner in this work, uh, Kathleen Jimmon. Thank you. Good afternoon. I, too, want to applaud the Attorney General for all the work that he's doing in this area. Whenever I speak to people in the real estate industry, um, I listen with very careful ears because they are such a bellwether of how the economy is going. And so now uh, we are hearing that things are picking up, and I get excited because when the real estate industry picks up, uh, then people are spending money, and our sales tax is picking up. Our, our ability to collect property taxes increases, and so we're better able to support the services that we need to provide at the local level. Unfortunately, the opposite was true beginning in 2008 when the real estate market crashed. Um, and a lot of this was due to the practices that we've heard so much about this morning that just undermine people's ability to stay in their homes, to pay their mortgage. Compounding that was the fact that the economy tanked, people were losing jobs, and many people had to walk away from the homes they had fought so hard to get into. So it is absolutely critical that we be able to provide resources to those families to say, you may not have to walk away. You may not have to turn in your key. You may not have to have the impact on yourself and your neighbors that you think you have to have. Come and talk with the folks here at TRIP. And we're very grateful that they are here to provide that sort of support to people, uh, to give them another look, another opportunity to stay in that home, another opportunity to be contributing to their neighborhood, contributing to their community. Uh, and to be able to achieve that dream. So again, I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Attorney General, for your support of the critical programs that are allowing this to happen. Um, and thank you to TRIP and other partners who are providing this good work uh, throughout our communities and throughout New York State. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> thank you. And uh, now another, another great partner in these efforts, uh, the mayor of the great city of Troy, uh, Lou Rossimino. Thank you, Attorney General. I'd like to thank the Attorney General, especially for his leadership on the Homeowners Project, Protection Project, and for spearheading the Land Bank Initiative. As we look around our community, we see the need for this. We've seen it happen. This, this zombie property is one of the issues that we really need to emphasize. People will often call into the City Hall and say, the property next door needs to be cut, the grass is too high, or there's garbage on the property. Who's responsible for this? So as we go through, we find out that yeah, the owner of the property has left, the bank is foreclosed, and it's just sitting there. So it comes back, and we end up doing the work because the banks are not responsive. So this was a great, great step. I really appreciate that, that the, the Attorney General is going to be pushing for these zombie properties. Uh, Troy, like Albany and Schenectady, understand the impact of the foreclosures. We've seen it all along, and the vacant properties. It creates that loss of revenue and that public safety issue that we see. You know, we've heard it before and we'll say it again. When one property starts to deteriorate and becomes a blight, it affects everybody. So with the leadership that we hear today from the Attorney General, we're going to move ahead with these initiatives. And we really look forward to working with the Attorney General's office, to working with the City of Albany, Schenectady, as we have a common goal. And that's to improve the quality of life for our citizens and for our residents. So, Attorney General, we thank you very much for what you've done. We look forward to working with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, and I do want to also say that, that it, it is wonderful that our, the mayors of the great cities of Albany and Schenectady are also here with us showing their support. This is a problem, as I said, that is bigger than any one of us. And I can do some things by myself. Each of these uh, the folks up here, are, they're creative, they're aggressive, and they're passionate about public service. Everyone can do something on their own. But together, we can actually get the housing market back on track in the state. And I'd now like to bring up uh, uh, Hillary Lamishaw, who is uh, our host and a, and a great friend in this effort. Hi, welcome. My name is Hillary Lamishaw, Director of Community Affairs here at TRIP. Um, and I want to join the chorus of cheerleaders and appreciative audiences for you. Thank you so much. Um, we're really pleased to welcome all of you here today. And it's um, actually very fitting that we're meeting in the TRIP building on this very floor. 
because Enable Labs is the place where the Troy Vacant Property Work Group meets regularly. So Mark, thank you so much for that. Um, we're pleased to welcome Attorney General Schneiderman, Senator Breslin, Assemblymember McDonald, Mayors Lou Rosamelia, Kathy Sheehan, and Gary McCarthy, Candidate Chuck Gimeno, uh, blah, blah, blah. No, um, <laughs> no I'm sorry. City, I left city, out a couple of city council. City council members, Rodney Wiltshire, who's the president of the Troy City Council, Lynn Kopka, who's a member of the Troy City Council, Jim Gordon, who's a new member of the Troy City Council, um, Neil Brett, I mentioned you, right? Okay, good. Am I good? Oh. All <laughs> right. Um, so, um, but I also want to recognize the people in the room who are, are also the heroes on this. How many of you are HOP uh, grantees or work for a HOP? Give yourselves a big hand. Because unlike me, I don't do direct services. You're the people who work with people directly, with homeowners who are distressed directly. And I know how um, heart-wrenching that can be. I know how difficult that can be. I know how frustrating that could be. But if you folks weren't doing that work, we would be in much um, worse shape. So congratulations. Keep it up. <laughs> um, and let's move on. Um, let's see. So um, we appreciate the actually not just the foreclosure issue that you're so good on, but consumer protection issues in general. I just have to mention that. Um, the HOP program has been terrific. We have a full-time housing uh, counselor who does just foreclosure prevention at the TRIP office on our Home Ownership Center, second floor. Feel free to stop down anyway, downstairs, and meet Paul Ricker. Um, we have a number of other housing counselors who do pre-purchase. That's going to be our next campaign because, really, if people had gotten pre-purchase counseling, they often wouldn't be in this position. So just a little sideline, okay? Or <laughs> put, put it on your list. Um, but we don't, we couldn't, we shouldn't delude ourselves that the crisis is over. In fact, policy wonks who are much smarter than me think we're not even halfway through the crisis yet. Um, and that's just really scary. And you can tell, for those of you who came um, from the north end down River Street, I mean, you could, I don't know if you can count, you know, the number of vacant buildings you passed. If you came up from South Troy, you know, the same thing. So it's a huge problem, and we think it's only going to get worse. Um, there are uh, 891 homeowners in Rensselaer County um, last year who were at risk of foreclosure. That meant that they were already in default and could expect some uh, pre-foreclosure notices coming. There were 475 RJIs, which is really the legal um, beginning of a foreclosure. So 475 in Rensselaer County last year. That's on average um, nine homeowners a week in the county are being served with court papers on foreclosure. So think about that and look around at your neighborhoods. And actually, I talked to someone yesterday who has seen the list of, um, of homeowners, and she says, Hillary, you would be surprised how many people you know. So this is not a poor people's problem. This is not a whatever. This is affecting us all. And a lot of it is because of the economy, and a lot of it is because of medical issues as well. Um, so our foreclosure counselor, uh, Paul, has 110 open cases right now. Think about that when you think you're busy. Um, but I also want to say, as, as you've heard before, foreclosure is a multifaceted problem. So some of you might remember the game Operation when you were a kid in the 60s. You know, the hip bones connected to the leg bone. Well, foreclosure is the same thing. I mean, it's not just a family that's impacted, um, but, it, it, but it has a domino effect. It, it impacts the value of the home that's occupied next door. Um, the value goes down. Homeowner's insurance goes up. Um, it's the downward spiral in market value where we can't even find financing. Um, to, to rehab, to purchase and rehab those buildings. We are lucky in Troy, and, and congrats to um, the mayor and others, that Troy is experiencing a bit of a revitalization, right? We're, we're, on, the, we're on the move. Um, and actually, I hear from people who want to purchase um, vacant property. Sometimes it's because they live across the street, and they want to protect their investment, so they want to take control of that property and not, you know, not just leave it up to um, whatever. Um, but it, it's, it's a difficult thing. It's... Um, in zombie properties, you can't even find out who the owner is, so you can't even purchase the property. There's no financing in these low-value um, neighborhoods. So, um, so we really appreciate that uh, there's uh, land bank legislation right now. The uh, two years ago, land banks were uh, legislation to create land banks were passed up to ten. There are eight so far. There's a little bit of a contest going on for the two more land bank applications. Um, in the state, hopefully Troy will be one of the uh, winners of that. Yeah, we're, we're halfway there. Um, and, and that's really key. And the money that comes with that is really key. Because as I said, the finance, finances are just not there. Um, in zombie properties, we really need to get a handle on what I think of as orphan uh, 
properties. Nobody cares for them. Nobody admits to owning them. You can't find the owner, and they're just out there. And we're going to see more and more of them. People are walking away from homes, and I think it, at higher rates because of the um, difficulty of maintaining them and because if they're in the middle of a foreclosure, they need to figure out what their next step is going to be. So that said, um, enough talking from me. Um, we are very lucky, I think, to have a customer here who is able to share and willing to share her story. And it's very difficult to find people who are open to talk about what their financial situation was, right? How many of you share that in your um, public life here? Um, so I want to introduce Iasia White and say thank you so much for coming and, share and talking with us today. And thank you for all the team. This is a team, as we started by saying, that's on board with dealing with vacant properties. And I can only expect we're going to make some improvements. So thank you so much. Thank you, Attorney General Schneiderman, for having me here today and allowing me to share my story. My name is Aisha White, and I've lived in Troy for about 10 years. I purchased my home back in 2006. In 2008, a car came through my neighbor's yard. Um, a piece of the fence hit my 18-month-old daughter in the head, and it shattered her skull. Um, Life-saving surgeries were needed as a result. The bills piled up, and my business began to suffer as a result. Um, eventually, I had trouble keeping up with my mortgage. When the foreclosure notices came, I showed up to court on my own. As you can imagine, I did not need the added expense of a lawyer. Thankfully, the judge in the case, Judge Zwack, recommended I get some help, and he referred me to the Legal Aid Society of Northeastern New York. I'm grateful for Judge Zwack because he pointed me in the right direction for help. I am, without the help of attorney Diane DeGroat, Sarah Netzel of the Legal Aid Society, and Tracy Peterson from the Afford Affordable Housing Partnership, I would have had to go through this process alone. And I don't think no one should have to do that. Today, my daughter is a high-spirited 70-year-old, and she's doing great. I have a job that I love, and I'm back on my feet, thanks to God. You know, um, I don't know how my story will end, but I do know that whatever happens, I will have Legal Aid to lean on and people like Tracy Peterson to help me along the way. Um, I want to thank the Attorney General for setting up this program and making sure families like mine have a fair and opportunistic chance. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, and I thank you for uh, Asia for standing up and the more people that share their stories the, the better other people feel about sharing it and this is the way we encourage uh, financial institutions we encourage uh, folks who might be resistant to making these changes to do the right thing so with the team we've got here I am confident uh, that we will continue to do this work I'm confident that we will be <laughs> we will continue to fund these programs and expand the funding for them as long as as they are needed and uh, we have uh, other financial institutions uh, still have not gotten to that table uh, that J.P. Morgan Chase got to recently, and I'm hopeful that uh, uh, I will be able to continue as your attorney general to uh, do that part of my job, and it inspires me every day when I do that hard work that the results of the work are, are working with you to help people like IASIA and the tens of thousands of other people across the state of New York that you're helping. Uh, and with that, thank you all.